Dum dum. Happy Michaelmas Eve, Michaelmas Eve. Dum dum, dum dum. Why does God allow evil things? Dum dum. Dum dum, dum dum. Why does God allow butchery? I am sorry for being like this. We're in the midst of a war. Luckily I'm protected in my Archie Bunker. I used to play football. Well, first I'll tell you. My mother, when I got in trouble, I'd always say, I'm sorry. And she'd always say, don't be sorry, just don't do it. Which didn't really work for me, you know. I don't blame her for that because she was quite young when she had me and a child herself. When I, when my mother was my age, I was... A grown man and I have no children that I know of or children for that matter sorry my mother told me don't be sorry just don't do it Once upon a time, a mother told the son, Where have you been? And he told her, Do, 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 do. I'm just as tired of the male dominance as you are. Trust me, I'm a man, you know, a woman in a man's world. I'm a man in a man's world. And I also don't fit in to this man's world. Dun, dun. But there was one man who really didn't fit into this man's world. One. There were many, there are many, there are many men who don't fit into this man's world. Just so there's no, no mistake. Even the men who fit into this man's world don't fit into this man's world. Happy Michaelmas, Eve. September. September, this forgotten season. In favor of October and Halloween. November and Thanksgiving. Christmas and Christ. We've forgotten Michaelmas. Michael, and of course I'm paraphrasing. Michael who? Whew. 
push the demons to hell, so to speak. God who made Satan ruler of hell. And we're, we are so quick, we're so ready to send people, to castigate people to hell. And when I say we, I mean me. I'm so ready, <laughs> still, knowing what I know, learning what I've learned, I'm still so ready to just be like, you're damned, even to myself. <sighs> Before I get to the sacrifice. Let's remember the sacrifice of the one who came before best. What they call the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper, depending on your denomination, The wine and the bread. It's a couple days before Sober October, and a year ago I posted a video about Sober October. A couple days after Sober October. Last year I celebrated Sober October a couple days late, because I forgot it was October. And I made it about six weeks. I actually got past October for a couple weeks. And then one day I walked in the Indian store down the road and picked up a bottle and said, why not? I had a drink. And then, since then, every day. It took about a week or two, drinking a little bit of this before I drank the whole thing. And then I bought one of these or an equivalent, a 20 ounce, 25 ounce and one of these. So basically for approximately the last nine months I've drank one of these or its equivalent and one of these. But I haven't drank any hard liquor, thank God. Over the last year I've drank no hard liquor, and for years before I did, but that's where I drew the line. And I pretty much drew the line at this. Sometimes I'd buy an extra 12 ounce, sometimes I'd buy a small uh, orange wine, um, but at least I drew at least I drew the line there. A year ago, I had a kind, and it, and it was brutal, because the day I quit drinking, I developed a, a, a pustule sore right here. I refer you to my videos from a year ago. Basically, it boils down to mer be because I developed a pustule right here it reminded me of heroin and that right heroin the heroin epidemic killing people uh, and also the um, not just heroin but like the pharmaceutical industry ramped up heroin with um, Oxycontin and so on and so now has the underground market of drugs of um, fentanyl 
And because people haven't found Mary, they die. So, in some sense, like, alcohol has saved me. Because at least I haven't gone to fentanyl, or heroin, or morphine, or oxycodone, or Percocets. I've taken Percocets in the past, but they didn't quite do it for me. Though they did relieve my back pain, which I have every day of my life for the last 20 years. But anyway, to make a long story short, I had this pustule. It was a very deep cyst. Um, could have been an ingrown hair. I don't know what it was, but it was deep in my arm, and it was um, super swollen. And it was so deep that I couldn't puncture it with a pin. I tried a few times to like puncture it to like relieve the pus um, but I was afraid of I was afraid if I pushed too hard I'd either sever a vein or an artery or cut a tendon or a ligament and that's what stopped me from doing it so then I just said fuck it I'm gonna go on and I don't have insurance so I couldn't go to the doctor and I don't have any extra money I live paycheck, paycheck to paycheck even though I shouldn't but that's how I live. And so the past year has been, it's been brutal. And I don't know, I've had all kinds of fears about what has happened to me over this past year. Um, but certainly what's happened to me over the last year is that I mean, this is to the best of my knowledge. There, I had to uh, paint for uh, several weeks, maybe a month with my left hand instead of my right hand because I couldn't really move my right hand. And for years, really, I've had problems all along the side of my body. I haven't spoken about it much. I have many videos that I made that I didn't post. Um, I erased a bunch of videos. When I, sometimes when I get mad, I erase my stuff. And uh, like on my phone that I haven't posted, because sometimes I want to put shit together like I've done in, pre you know, in previous videos. I put all these things together. And... Um, Anyway, I lost him. But anyway, to make a long story short, from that pustule, what I think happened is that it's kind of like something between like gout and like fibromyalgia or like some sort of autoimmune deficiency response. O over specifically the right side of my body. Also at about the same time, and I really wish I'd posted this video, I had a problem with my knee. And I had made a video of myself just about, well, half naked, where it showed my knee like really small, swollen. And I, I wish I'd post, that's the one I wish I'd kept, but I didn't. So now, be, because I want to give proof, because I'm a doubter, and I know there are other doubters out there, and I want to give proof. Because despite the fact that I'm an abomination, God still works through me. I didn't used to be like this at all. I used to be very, 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 very different. 
than the image you see before you. Very. Um, in many ways. And my hubris then, my conceit then, would have hated me now as much as you do. My hope and my prayer is that like I come through the other side. So I'm creeping upon sober October again. And I've known since that, since 10 months ago, I've known since about 10 months ago that this October 1st, I would do so sober October again. And every single, every single day, I've bought one of these and one of these for 10 months. And to me, that's good because it's better than what I was before. To most people, this would be an abomination. To the pious, this would be. But to God, God's been unrelenting with God's message. But yet, I'll read something from Paul. Corinthians uh, 1, 24. Remember that in a race, everyone runs. But only one person gets the prize. You also must run in such a way that you will win. All athletes practice, and I used to be an athlete. All athletes practice strict self-control. They do it to win a prize that will fade away but we do it for an eternal prize so I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step I am not like a boxer who misses his punches I discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should otherwise I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So I don't do what Paul did there. But I shared the fear. Which is why I'm going to come upon Sober October once again. If I don't succeed in the next year, I'm going to make it Sober September. <laughs> Because October is a terrible time <laughs> to try to become sober. The years are changing. You know, the seasons are changing. Colds are coming up upon us. Anyway. I recognize I'm in an, an abomination, and I guess I'm asking God the same way the, the leper or the paralyzed one asked Jesus, heal me. Like, I'm, I'm asking God still in my heart of hearts, even though I dare not pray. These day, I used to pray every day as a child for 20 years. Yes, if we're, in, if we're in our 20s, we're a child. I didn't know it then. <clears throat> or 30s, for that matter. And even today. In my mid-40s. Um, I don't dare... 
pray to God these days because I know our prayers are answered beforehand I've already people look for proof of God right so far for the most part God's proofs are not public I'm hoping to help change that But, it may be a vain hope. But, but God has been proven to me. Kind of, sort of. Because I met the one with the claim. Or I have met one with the claim. In body. You know? And, I am more of a doubter than even Thomas. So the only hope I have is to achieve more than Thomas achieved. And Thomas is, is looked down upon, even though Thomas, right. So the Catholic Church and Islam have raised up to encompass somewhere between a half and two thirds of the world mythologically, theologically. Thomas planted a seed 2,000 years ago that has only stretched itself at best upon two, two, two or three thousands of a percentile of the population of the earth. The Church of Thomas beneath the king has touched little yet it has remained. It's a, it's a lot like uh, how the Egyptians buried seeds with the pharaohs so you'll get this two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand year old seed that was buried in a tomb and you plant it and it grows like it was a seed that was dropped yesterday or a year ago. That's what Thomas did. I hope you'll forgive me if you hate upon the doubters. Thomas the doubter. Thomas the doubter planted a precious seed. Or, <laughs> what is it, uh, an Irish hewn opal? Far away. And it has remained in the most <sighs> unlikely place, India, the west coast of India. And it's hard to imagine that the fire that burns without consuming that will cover the earth will not be lit there, if not Turkey. Anyway, this is more of a diary, diary entry, journal entry, than anything else. Whatever happened in that thing that, at least I recorded that. At least I got that, you know. Didn't look great on tape, but I got it. I, could, I couldn't do this with my arm. And even to, 
even a week ago, I went like this, and I could still feel it. This, this, all of this, like all my connective tissue up into here, my ear, my jaw on this side, burning, 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 especially for the last several weeks, especially up in here. My knee, my knee is less healed, but it's better because I could barely bend this leg. And then because I'm, I'm a house painter, so I have to get on the ground a lot to paint baseboard or like the bottom of, a, of, of, of the trim of a door. And like, I couldn't get down on this, on my right knee, so I was getting down on my left knee. But I was getting down on my left knee so much that my left knee got fucked up and I don't wear knee pads, which I should. I should wear knee pads. And then they both got fucked up. So for about the last couple months, I've been um, sitting on paint pots. Like I turn paint pots upside down and sit on them when I'm painting baseboard. I feel foolish about it, but it's like, if I want a paycheck, I have to work and have to figure things out to work. And I don't have health insurance, so I can't go to the doctor. I don't have, uh, I don't have a safety net. I have no savings. I know I could have savings because I've acquired savings before, but it took a lot of time and effort to like study how to do it. And I spend all my time these days seeking the truth. but I'm an overzealous seeker. That's the thing. And that's what I've learned this year. Zealous, to be a zealous seeker is good. To be overzealous is bad. <laughs> because the Lord provides. God provides. Anyway, what I wanted to get to about a year ago, when I was talking about Mary, the heroine, the heroine of heroines, wreaked havoc on my body, but I learned so much. I've learned so much. You know? And I've neglected my body because I just want to get these things so I can forget about how, you know. I drink, I, dr I, I drink these every night to soothe the hurt in my body. And my body hurts so bad because I spend less time on like cooking and buying the right foods and going the r to the right stores to buy the right foods. To my mind, the best diet, quote unquote, that I've ever seen is the uh, Dr. Sebi, S-E-B-I, Dr. Sebi, rest his soul. Uh, 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 when I eat what he says to eat, the way he says to eat it, never mind taking his herbs, things go pretty phenomenal here. Anyway. Um, but it's like, I can't go here and I can't go there because my mind's just been racing. It's like, I gotta know this, 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 I gotta know this. And I've been given a lot, you know. I've learned a lot. I haven't talked... As much as I've talked, I think this is my... I didn't realize. I thought I'd only made like about 100 videos. And then I checked the other day. I've made like over 700 videos. Which is dumb, but... Um... Anyway, yeah, whatever happened here caused an immune 
something through all my body and that and all my joints all my tendons all my ligaments just over the last year it's like every day it's a different pain in a different place but almost all of it has been on this side of my body and recently it came up to here on this side of my body I haven't talked about it much you know. and over the last couple of weeks even as I made my doling videos it moved across my neck into my teeth all this kind of thing and then as soon as I made my doling video it started to switch it was like yesterday day before day before that something like that all my days blend together but the pain that was right here moved to here the pain that was here moved to here, like this ear was all clogged up, this jaw was all clenched up, this side of my throat, like there's some kind of duct up in the uh, uh, hair, up there, that was like, it felt infected, it felt hurt, I was like, oh my god, I got cancer, this out, whatever, but then another part of me was like, well, I have been having this thing move around my body and my connective tissue, so, you know. And then like all of a sudden like, now this ain't perfect, but like all the pain that was on this side of my face just went away. I had like a lightning strike of pain in my, in my right ankle. And then I had a lesser lightning strike of pain in my left ankle. I, I haven't had virtually any pain on this side of my body. All the pain shifted to this side of my body. And now, this arm hurts, and this elbow hurts. This elbow hurts still a little bit, right there. But, like, I have this huge pain right here. And it's been that way for about a week. And I didn't mention anything about it, because it's like life moves on. So it doesn't seem like anything hurts, because I'm just sitting here talking, talking, talking. So sometimes when we watch people talking and they just seem like they're fine or they're animated and everything's fine and good and whatever. I have such an extraordinary pain right here. I can't close my mouth like I can't chew. I can't eat. And it only happened today just after noon. This morning I could close my mouth fine. It still hurt, but I could still chew food. Right? About halfway through the morning, I could only clamp this, sh this, sh like my molars only can't, you know, we need molars to chew. So like I could only clamp my molars on this side of my face and not this side of my face. That hadn't happened yet. And then at about three o'clock, I can't, I can't chew. I can, I can touch the tips of my teeth together, but I can't like close my mouth to chew. My molars don't reach, like I, I can't chew. So, I was very frightened. I guess I am very frightened. Um, but I just kept thinking like how, how strange and ironic that like 300, approximately 360 days after I quit smoking and and I hated that the fact that like I decided last year like I definitely questioned God like I'm gonna quit drinking I'm gonna quit drinking on October you know it took a long time last year when I came to sober October it took a long time before that saying like I'm gonna quit drinking it's sober October now I feel a lot better about quitting drinking this sober October because I did it last sober October for six weeks So for a few, a few minutes, I was like, you're doing this to me again, God? You fucked with me last year when I quit drinking? I mean, there was there were times because, because my right knee was fucked up, my arm was fucked up. I couldn't use like the whole right side of my body. And then my left knee got fucked up because I was leaning on my left knee. So I was like, I can't even use crutches because my like, 
my lymphs or whatever, like my glands and my armpit were swollen. My, my, my elbow didn't work. My knee didn't work. So like, I couldn't even use like crutches, you know, but then like there, there, I had to call into work like one day, I think. But, and then there were other days where luckily there weren't people around where was, I was climbing a ladder and it was like, oh my fucking God. Cause it was just like, it was hell just getting to the top of the ladder. I tried to be friendly and jovial with people, but they must, they must have been looking at me like the other contractors because they're, they're running around like he-men, you know? And yes, a lot of it's because I'm a drunk, but I had, I had a lot of problems before I was a drunk, you know? Sometimes I think uh, the only thing that has saved me is that, like, I can be friendly and jovial with other people, and when I'm alone, I can get drunk. You know, sometimes, I, and I hate to say this, and I'm sorry, and if you're sensitive, leave now. If you, if you don't feel good, leave now. But if you're doing all right with it, I'm just, I'm just telling you, fact of the matter. The only thing that kept me from doing this... was this. And this. God works in mysterious ways. We live in a butcher's, butcherous world. Why does God do butcherous things? Anyway, actually, I just want to get to one more thing. is that now I can't chew. I can't chew. So I'm either going to have to go to the doctor or I'm going to have to get my nutrients without chewing. So on this Mikomasi Eve, right? And I'm actually joyful. When I figured this out, I actually got joyful. It took me, it took me the ride home to figure it out. So I went and bought some uh, protein drinks because I don't want to fast. Fasting will heal me. The, th the reason why I don't fast is because I'm addicted. I'm addicted to alcohol. I, I, I'm pretty much addicted to weed, but I, I, uh, I stopped smoking weed like a few weeks ago, knowing that I was going to try to stop drinking. It's been an okay couple weeks. I miss smoking weed. I love weed. The problem is... Weed keeps, weed keeps, has kept me from going like schizophrenic. Um, but I can't get to where I want to get to if, if I don't stop smoking weed. Now, occasionally, that's fine. Now, actually, the biggest problem is the cigarettes. So I guess this is the thing, like, I'm so broken of a guy, like, there's no, there, there isn't room in my church, in your church for me. And this is part of the reason why I'm trying to develop the vegan cross, is that the vegan cross is non-denominational. The vegan cross, it shouldn't be me who has to say this. It should be someone better. But the thing is, if it was someone better, scumbags like me wouldn't buy into it. Flat out, man. Just saying it like it is. But, like, I'm addicted to cigarettes. I'm addicted to coffee. I'm addicted to alcohol. I'm addicted to food. I'm addicted to porn. I used to be addicted to sex. At least I gave that up. Not that sex is bad. Uh, my relationship with it just hasn't worked out. My relationship with women hasn't worked out. My rela you know, <sighs> as safe you know, as safe as I am and as grateful as I am, like you know, even those of us who are like well off, and I'm well off. I have electricity. I have a room. <laughs> you know. 
I have water. I have enough money to buy all my drugs. So I'm rich. <clears throat> and I use my riches not well. I know I use my riches not well, which is why I make these videos. I've shown a lot of the embarrassing parts of myself in the hopes that when I get to the other side, I can encourage others. It might not work. This might all be for naught, but I'm hoping that it's for something. And it might just be to reach you, one person who gets what I'm saying and can transform it in a better way. But anyway, I can't close my jaws. And I got excited. Because I thought, huh, a Mikkelmas Eve ritual. Because, of course, Jesus said, you know, drink this, eat the bread, and think of me. Now, I can't eat the bread. If I went to Matt, like if I went to Catholic Mass today, I wouldn't be able to eat the bread. If I went to communion, I wouldn't be able. If I went to eat the Eucharist, I couldn't do it because I can't, I can't chew. And it's getting worse as the day goes on. Like, I can't chew. It's all locked up in here. Now, it might be because my ears are clogged because I don't clean my ears. You know, I got, I got some stuff down at uh, Walgreens to, like, clear out my ears. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll help. I'm, my hygiene is deplorable because I spend all my time researching, trying to make up for lost time, and trying to leave my breadcrumbs, you know. But anyway, I can't eat the Eucharist today, right? And it's funny that the whole Maccabees thing is left out of the Bible, except I guess in the Catholic Church, you know, but like. Those 400 year, that four, approximately 400 year gap between the New Testament and the Old Testament, yet that's in between there is where Hanukkah happened. So there's the tradition of the unleavened bread. Well, I can't eat unleavened bread today, and I don't have time to make bread pudding from the leavened bread that's left over. So what do I got? Oat porridge. Oatmeal porridge. Jesus was born in the barn. That's what they say. <laughs> well, that's what some say. Some say he was born beneath a tree. Some say he was born in the cave or just outside the cave or in the barn or just outside the barn. Either way, he was born in the wilds with the animals, wild or domesticated. I have a plan to quit smoking now. I have a plan to quit drinking. I'll, I'll, I'm going to be quitting uh, drinking for at least October. But I'm going to take it six weeks again. Because it actually took me... That's the thing too. People talk about going to rehab for a month or 28 days or whatever. No. Because the first smile I had was six weeks after I quit drinking. Like the first authentic, I can't talk like this when I'm sober. I can't be like this for this amount of time when I'm sober. It took me six weeks. And I can't quit smoking when I the same time I quit drinking, so far as I know. I don't observe the fast because I can't, because I go nuts. I'm so addicted. I'm basically riddled with so many demons. For real, right? But, but please don't give up on me. And the only reason I say that is like, there's so many of us, so many souls, who are open to the other thing. And we're so quick 
to send all these souls to hell. So the people in the church, right? Like, I don't go to the church, really. I would disgrace a church. I am disgusting, nasty, stinking, this, that, whatever. And if I went to the church, you'd try to save me in a certain way. The thing is, you're protected by the angels. So you don't understand what the demon realm is like, so to speak. I'm being poetic. I, I'm not a demonologist. I've just discovered from studying the angels that, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, there are certainly many false pious among you in the churches. But like the people in the churches need the people outside the churches. And the people outside the churches need the people inside the churches. And the thing is, we need a shared moral code. No one left behind. You have your comforts. 401k, community, softball, I have my comforts. You protect yourself from demons one way, I protect myself from demons another way. And I'm being very poetic. Because the common notion of demons is shit. But the, the, the more complicated notions of demons are very important and very fucking real. Anyway. I just wanted to make a new ritual. And of course, Jesus, uh, they call it the, the Last Supper. They call it the Lord's Supper. Jesus never ate that day. It wasn't the Last Supper. The Last Supper of Jesus is in the Bible is after he was risen from the dead. And I got beef with Luke about that. He didn't eat that day. He served. He fasted. Normally, I'd have a little bit of bread. But I can't chew it today. So I can't eat the bread. And I can't eat unleavened bread because that would be even harder for me to eat. So I got my oat porridge. And whenever I think of porridge, I think of the little boy in the book, uh, The Ragged, Ragged Trousered Philanthropist, who said he was strong because he ate porridge every morning. Oh, I smoke cigarettes and drink coffee every morning. Maybe I should learn from that little boy. But I'm going to give this a try. I don't know. Maybe I can drink oat porridge. So this will have to be my sacrificial bread for this evening. And maybe for the next month or so. Because it took a long time for that pustule in my arm to heal. All fucking year. But I could more or less move my arm better after a couple weeks. So I might have to fast for a couple weeks. And I remember at that time I said, you know, Fuck y'all. And I was even talking to the archangels, man. I was like, fuck y'all, man. I'm not going to the doctor. Because if I had health insurance, I would have I would have sprinted to the doctor. Same as same as with whatever's going on here. Like if it wouldn't cost me, like basically if I went to the doctor and got a bill to fix whatever's happening right here, I'd be homeless in a week. I can't afford it. So I'm going to have to rely on God. And God's helpers. And there's a lot of them. And then I also th thought, before I realized that I could have this Mikkelmas ritual, before that I was like, I'm being punished for making the doling videos. And I also thought, 
well, I'm going to die. And maybe I will. Maybe, maybe I'll die in a couple days. I don't know. I envision whatever this swelling is happening in here, like just busting my jaw open. And certainly there's a lot going wrong because I, you know, my breakfast is cigarettes and coffee. You know, and it only gets worse from there, really. Though, I eat a lot of red peppers, you know. But yeah, I might... Uh, oh yeah, I don't observe fasting. I don't fast. I uh, I skipped supper the other night. And the next morning, like... I was so insane, like, I could barely take it. You know? So... Then I thought, well, maybe this is a blessing. And then I got happy. It's weird, man. I got so happy today. Like... I've never had anything like this. I've never heard of anything like this. I've heard of lockjaw. I've heard of TMJ and like gout in the jaw where you can't open your mouth. I can't close my mouth, so I can't chew. I guess effectively it's the same thing. Like instead of, ha and at least I can talk. <laughs> still, if it swells much more, I won't, I'll, I'll still do it to talk. And I won't be able to, you know, you need, you need this. You need, you need this to talk. You need to be able to, v, v, v. Like, how do you ventriloquists say v? Uh, 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 uh. I don't know, maybe I'll figure that out. Maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's the second blessing, you know. I never thought I could go, Now I can. Not well, but I can do it. So maybe next maybe next year at this time I'll be able to make a V without going like this. Hey man, can I make a V now? Huh? Yeah, isn't that great? Um But yeah, anyway, maybe the blessing is like God's making me fast. Because God knows I'm ready to take on the challenge. I'm afraid of fasting because when I fast, I can't sleep. I'm afraid of quitting drinking because when I quit drinking, I can't sleep. I don't mind not sleeping if I don't have anything to do. But when you can't sleep one night and you go to work, yeah, you can get through it. And then when you don't really sleep the next night and you go to work, yeah, you can kind of get through it. You do that for a few days and then all of a sudden, like, and especially if you're in an environment that isn't like, cozy shit gets fucking brutal so I'm gonna try to just take it easy that's what I'm doing now I'm trying to take it easy and uh I'm gonna eat this in remembrance of him